In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the difference between case control studies and cohort studies. And we're going to have a look at the, the relative strengths of each study design. Let's start with case control studies. To do a case control study, where you start is with a group of cases. So people that have a particular condition, they've got a disease. And it's a great study if it's a rare condition or rare disease, right? So you find people that have a disease. Let's say, for example, we found a group of people who at the age of 21 suddenly find their hair goes green. So we collect those people in the group. We create an analogous group, right? People that don't have that condition, but are in every other way similar to the first group. Then we look back in time, we look retrospectively at their respective histories and try and identify exposures that may have, and we can look at multiple exposures, that may have led to the condition in this case of green hair. And then we compare these two groups, the people with green hair and the people without green hair, and we try to determine if there is a difference in the extent to which they were exposed to the group of exposures that we're interested in. Importantly, you can do it fast, right? Because you can do the study right now. You can, you can get data today on what happened uh, in yesteryear. And it's cheap, right? It doesn't cost much money to do. Interestingly or importantly, uh, the evidence that you get from a case control study is not considered to be strong evidence. Okay, now let's talk about cohort studies, right? And we're gonna, I want you to understand the difference between these two studies. Now, remember when we talked about a case control study, we started with outcomes of interest, sometimes a rare outcome, and we looked back in time at multiple exposures. The cohort study is exactly the opposite. We start off with an exposure of interest, right? So it might be a, a, a rare exposure. There's just a few people in the world that have been exposed to something that's unusual. People that have been to the North Pole, right? So we, we find that group of people. We find an analogous group. We find a second group of people who are in every other way similar to the first group, except they haven't had the exposure of interest. Like these are people that haven't been to the North Pole. But in terms of their, dem their demography and their age structures and their socioeconomic strata, et cetera, et cetera, you try and make sure that they're pretty much the same because you're going to compare these two groups. Now you look forwards in time and you follow this group up, right? You follow the cohort up over time to see what outcomes emerge over time as a result of that exposure, right? So just to summarize, we're talking about a prospective study. You're looking at rare exposures. You can examine them for multiple outcomes. It takes a long time to do because you've got to follow this group up over time. It's expensive, right? So to run a study like that costs a lot of money. Uh, but what you do get out of it is good, strong evidence. So it's stronger. It's considered to be stronger evidence than a, a case control study. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.